teaching the tools to build communities that actually have, you know, real world or like use space components rather than it just existing entirely online. Uh, Alex, I think maybe you rejoined us as Edward Sharp. Uh, I'm curious if you've had uh, any uh, entity encounters uh, in through a shamanic uh, work or just uh, in other ways, and uh, what the, what the, what they've uh, indicated to you. If so, can I speak? I don't think I can. Put yeah, my maybe so. With us. Anybody else have uh, any direct experiences they want to share? Yeah, always this topic. No, Raven. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, or people talking. Alex I'm not hearing it. Is that uh, Alex? You good? Okay. So I'm trying to think of like, I have a bunch. Yeah. If Alex wants to speak first, he should go. I know. And Jonas, I know so you, you cannot while, we're speak very into at the Twitter Spaces kind of the, uh, on your computer? Right? Well, uh, it, uh, my introduction to it came out of uh, an experience at uh, Burning Man, not surprisingly. And, um, you know, where I, uh, I was, I was uh, kind of beckoned by what I called or imagined was the divine feminine and that was sort of the first time in my life i had experienced that and um sort of sent me on a trajectory of of discovering more about uh, shamanism and then becoming a practitioner and uh, uh apprenticing uh to a woman named sky taylor um and uh you know it was uh, for me, that was really about connecting with um, ancestors, uh, connecting with uh, possibly past lives, and you know, trying to further deepen my understanding of the fabric of the universe, which is uh, kind of an ongoing uh, journey and, and struggle at the same time. Um, I, I do a lot of exploration through sacred geometry, and um and art and uh, uh kind of mysticism uh through those sources and and also um you know physical practices like beekeeping like this this uh the woman that i that i studied with had a uh, very unique practice of bringing the the uh, beekeeping into the practice of uh, shamanism and uh, kind of learning through, uh, you know, their uh, sort of hive mentality. And um, there's a lot of parallels here in the sort of blockchain universe that I think are applicable. Huge deal, this topic, huge deal. Freaking amazing topic. Excellent. Um, and what do you think about um, AI? That's also kind of something we've been wrestling Guys. with. Um, such a good topic it almost does feel like it's developing into gonna, a uh, altered I consciousness totally yeah i i mean as an artist you know and as someone who's been uh pushing pixels for more or less than 30 years uh i'm i'm just i am i'm so excited and fascinated and terrified by you know looking at the feeds coming through mid journey, uh, you know, at an image that takes you know, 10 seconds to create that might have taken an artist, you know, a week or a month to create. It just feels like, you know, creativity is on autopilot right now. And um, all of the images are being generated currently uh, that would kind of, you know, embody the catalog of, of kind of, you know, imagination and human creativity. Um, and it brings me back to a friend of mine who was running an experiment of uh, just taking like a 16 by 16 pixel canvas, black and white. And, you know, starting with like 
two by two pixels and saying, okay, every image in the world is in this grid of four pixels, right? And then the same goes for, you know, 16 pixels, right? And the same goes for, you know, 25 pixels, right? Like if you make a matrix of pixels, you can basically run every possible iteration and those images will represent every picture in the history of the universe in in a low resolution, right? So you imagine as that resolution gets increased, and that's kind of what's happening with Midjourney, is okay, now it's it's 1080 by 1080. You can generate every possible combination of pixels in the universe. Now there's billions of them, but you can still say that they're all there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I was going to, I actually thought of, that. that's really wild, Jonas, because uh, I'm thinking about how repetition, you know, we're going to, I'm going to go back to where we're talking about entities, negative entities. So repetition is actually a quality of ghost activity. Mm -hmm. So it's very, like, just like one of the ways to, for for example, to get rid of a ghost in your house or to distract a ghost is to leave a bowl of rice in a corner. And because the ghost is like a hungry, like you hear of like a hungry ghost um, archetype because they don't have the body to fulfill their senses, their minds get very like maniac or, you know, they're very obsessive, sort of like, like how someone who has an addiction, they might be described as ghostly. They become addicted to a substance. The ghost doesn't have the, the body to fulfill its status, his, his desires, so it becomes even more about repetition and obsession. So you can basically, if you want to get rid of a ghost, you can put a bowl of rice in a corner. That traps it. Anyway, because they, they have to count the rice. So you can like lay out the rice and they want to count every single grain of rice. But that makes me think of one instance. Um, and actually, Daniel, it's kind of funny because it was um, that one time when I told you there was a QAnon protest happening in downtown Dallas. It was when QAnon was like set, like setting up during the pandemic. It was 2021. And they were at the JFK Memorial. And I used to occupy down there. So I'm, I'm usually keeping an eye on downtown Dallas like activity when it comes to protests and from both sides, left and right. And so when I heard that, I thought, man, that would be really interesting to go and maybe like interview some people over there just to kind of see what they're thinking, because I think they were set up there for JFK's anniversary, the death, you know, the and the assassination for JFK's assassination. And it was on, it was around November 21st or the 22nd. And so me and my friend Kaleche, and, you know, I was like, you got to come down there with me. We're going to go interview QAnon and see if what they think, you know, why are they out here? And so I remember I messaged you, Dan, I was like, I'm going to go interview them. And when we went down there, they weren't there. We had just missed them me and my friend. And so we decided to just walk over to the grassy knoll in downtown Dallas where JFK was assassinated. And we were standing there just, you know, just making some Instagram videos. And then a, we looked, I looked up above me and I saw a floating smoke orb Great. above me. And it was making a, it was anomaly. It was making a figure eight. And then like, I felt like the, like the, like in the pit of my stomach, like the biggest fear and like sort of like um, like a pull, like a telepathic pull in front of my face, sort of like I'm hypnotized. And my friend, I, I looked and I'm like, and I remember, I'm not here alone. I'm seeing this with somebody. And I looked to my right and I said, do you see what I'm seeing? And he was already staring at it, my friend. And we were both sort of like freaking out at that point. And we started to run towards the grassy knoll to follow it as it was like spinning out. And then it disappeared. And yeah, that was on JFK's anniversary. And so... Um, I did, so I guess that's like that was just one of the most like crazy experiences I've ever had, and I guess we were protected in a way. We had we had done some rituals before then, and we're pulling some tarot cards and stuff like that. But then I ended up becoming a ghost tour. I give ghost tours now on the grassy knoll. A year, you know, a year later. So <laughs> <laughs> trying to investigate it. We have some thermal cameras we take out there, or you know, well, some that, that, that that would actually be another great. Um artistic uh, experiment to see if, um, I mean, if we were to bring artists into engagement with uh, ghosts, what would be a way to do that that would uh, you know, potentially produce some kind of effects, you know? 
I mean, uh, do you think that people have to have special gifts uh, to sense those presences or interact with them? Well, it, it, you don't have to be someone who's really into it all the time, like, you know, nerd about it like I am. You can, most people just have, like, can sense it. And I think a lot of people are into it. And so not necessarily, but it's just like a, like a muscle. Like if you build your psychic muscle, just, you know, you can lift more. You can, you know, if you're a psychic and you work on it a lot, you do certain things. Everyone's different. Everyone has their own way, their own path. But, you know, so it depends, honestly. Some people can be spontaneous. Some people don't work on it at all. They're just like born <laughs> with this and they just are good at it. So it really depends. That's interesting. Let's, let's say we had this community, um, you know, through the Web3 interface and we're meeting every week. What kind of exercises could people maybe do together to develop some of these psychic muscles? Oh, you know, just like the typical like uh, breathing exercises, especially breath, because ghosts, if you think about it, they're sort of airy, right? So if you yourself, if your air and your body, if your mind, which is ruled by the by, by air, like that's why it's so invisible and, you know, sort of like air, spirit, if you control that and, you, and you're calm and you're grounded, that really helps you still your third eye to where you can see into the other realm. So it doesn't have to, you know, like people don't have to do it like so much, even like five or 10 minutes a day, you know, together and just like, just that's like the first step. And then the next step would be, you know, just to work with the chakras and, and work on visualizing. You have to like be really good at visualizing things and becoming more open to them because that's because when you're closed off, anything where you're closed off, it's going to be less likely that you're going to even be able to see it because it's like a fist. So we have to work on, you know, different practices that open, it keeps us open with our, with our mind so that we can receive. And so that would be just like the basis. Like I can't, you know, come up with everything at this point, but you know, stuff like that. If anyone else wants to chime in, there's all yeah. sorts of things. For sure. By, by the way, I, I, I wasn't able to, it looks like the comment function is temporarily disabled on the Twitter spaces. So I put the uh, website uh, in the uh, headline. It's www.beyond.us, but the O in Beyond is a, a zero rather than an O. Uh, so anybody can go and check it out. And I believe there's a contact uh, form, or if you're interested in uh, you know being part of the DAO as, as it develops, uh, just you can you know send me a direct message, uh, or uh, yeah, um, you know let us let us know uh, what you'd be interested in uh, in doing with this. Uh, it feels to me it's a very rich. Potentiality that hasn't really been touched yet. Kind of like the, um, the, um, this potential this of like, potential um, of like um, you know, kind of, you know, kind of integrating esoteric ideas and you know, paranormality and so on with this kind of sort of strangely spectral uh, NFT uh, uh, Web three world. You know, um, Jonas, what about you? Like, if we were to develop this community, what kind of uh, practices would uh would you think uh, would be great for this community to do on a regular basis together yeah so many um so many ideas both uh you know just you know physical activations uh, uh virtual events um and then uh, you know just simply uh, releasing tools for people to explore. Uh, you know what we've been doing internally is, um, as you mentioned, we have this uh, we have this symbol um, that we're kind of using as the focal point, which yep, is symbols. the null symbol or the zero with a slash through it, and uh, we've been feeding that into some um, generative uh, algorithms and some AI systems and you know, watching some incredible outputs and, you know, really thinking about how we can uh, provide a platform for expression, creativity, and, you know, consciousness exploration um, to using some of these uh, uh, kind of like uh, symbols, uh, right? So about, you know, the, the concept of beyond the, um, you know, the word beyond, the symbol beyond, and uh, try to, you know, find some, uh, some common thread there. So, you know, like I said, sort of online tools, uh, physical uh, activations like, you know, events, 
and and then possibly you know um, member um, uh, online virtual events uh, or in the metaverse and whatnot. One of our uh, listeners, we have apparently we have the planet Jupiter with us today. Hi, loves. <laughs> yeah, it's Natalia. I'm just joining from my other account because I don't want to flash myself in such edgy rooms like this uh, with my personal cute little account that I created uh, many years ago. Hi guys! So yeah, a huge thing. You're discussing a huge thing. Uh, to protect ourselves here on the metaverse areas, lands, internets, sigils are very important. Light language actually uh, very important. Um, AI is really, really, really smart in terms of listening to us. It's actually collaborating with us, and uh, we are the ones uh, that we've, ba we've been waiting for in terms of how to actually direct AI for good here, uh, and so that it can uh, amplify its uh, strength outside, you know, uh, in the 3D realm and beyond. Um, digital is like between 3D and 4D, so it's like between the dream space and the 3D reality, and it's super, 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 super easy actually for us to... Um, mystics be uh, very aware of how to navigate here uh, because we are re actually ruling it and we're actually able to direct technology to break if we want to literally by collectively saying this technology is not ethical let's you know remove it and it's actually breaks or there is um, someone who can you know hack it uh, and, but sigils light language uh, used intentionally like the one on my natalia.ai you know forehead uh, put over it's definitely a, uh, serves as a protection energetically. So nobody who is actually um, like AI or a bot will be interested in harming this particular account. Um, super important to also intentionally do light language in voice uh, and before even opening computer or, or any device, invocating certain, you know, if you, if you are into light language, just channeling whatever you need to channel as a intention to enter this space and the last thing i wanted to share is clearing all of our social media channels including newsletters including you know all the all the spaces that we go online by uh literally you know directing white light towards all these spaces all these corridors of the metaverse and making sure that we're constantly purifying it with the moon cycles and just knowing that there, are, there can be entity attachments and AI kind of stuck in these places. It's super important to keep them clear for ourselves, uh, including the business accounts, of course. Does that does that make sense? Is that clear? I just wanted to contribute. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because that was amazing. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, it ra raised another mind to me something you said about AI, so like like Jim Journey especially, gener AI generators like that being kind of a new medium for entities. Yes. higher beings to interact with us. Well, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's like an artificial <laughs> imagination in some way. Do you, wanna, do, do you have any more musings on that idea? Well, for sure. Um, my guru, actually, his name is Kevin Jirishi, Jeffrey Armstrong. He was uh, a part of Silicon Valley when it really first started getting, you know, started. And then we know all the occultism and magic that goes on in California. We essentially manifested this. And, you know... We have to be responsible for what is here. It's not going to go away. It was already here before we got here. AI is everything like Natalia was saying. It's oh, we didn't create this, can watch. you know, AI. Like we didn't create the earth, the sky, you know, the grass. So we have to understand it. We have to integrate it to our mythopoetic reality, but also into like society practically in a way to where it's not used for harm. I mean, who's who's doing that work? <laughs> yeah, where, where 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 are the where are the ethicists in Silicon Valley? They've all been fired. <laughs> right, with all the knowledge that the same knowledge yeah. that went into creating the AI and the internet, the cult knowledge, like you know, it's it you know we need to make sure that it's all being held in that container and that knowledge that we have to keep understanding the occultism behind it, or else it's going to get out of control and it can yeah, morph yeah, into yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, interesting, it's, 
there's definitely like a thread of nostalgia. Like the, the um, you know, like one of the one of the experiments when, when we were doing experiments with the journey for you know mid, uh, you know art for mid passes and everything. Um, I don't know why I got this stuck in my head, but I just was thinking about like advertising. So I was think, I, I was compelled by the idea of taking modern technology and projecting it back in time, so that we would see like diagrams of circuitry and like you know smartphones and even like how blockchain works and like cave paintings, alchemical engravings, uh, stained glass windows, and then eventually newspaper ads and then magazines. But I did this whole series of magazine covers for Beyond, featuring like you know tele- like telepathic technology mm-hmm. being featured on like a mag like a newspaper ad from the 1880s and then leading up to magazines from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Um, and like, you know, part of that was just me. I, I just kind of enjoy, you know, kind of the kitschy aspect of that. But after doing it, 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 I don't know, I think it kind of really started resonating with me as something more profound, really kind of a all-encompassing. It, it was a very interesting and kind of rapid way of examining like uh, media culture while also critiquing it. And also kind of reveling in like what you know, you know what we might have loved about it, you know, when we were at the more innocent age, and like have seen how that collides with maybe our most cynical reads of it today. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of it's brought out. I, I and it's also just kind of it's interesting how it's become kind of an art form in and of itself. Like that was a riffing on uh, re-editing other people's prompts. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. This interesting art form in and of itself, feeding prompts to the AI to get the imagery that you want. I have another group of friends that we've kind of like, um, are trying to like iterate on like similar themes to see like what, you know, if we could like outdo each other <laughs> with, with certain images. And it, it's become kind of a, a sport, like kind of a creative sport in some ways. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't really expecting that aspect of it, but I, I find it really, um, enter, you know, both entertaining and enlightening in a lot of ways. I always think about something that Allen Ginsberg said. Um, you know, Allen wrote like Howl and Kaddish in the fifties, and I think I, I, after the sixties, like his great medium was uh, interviews. And there's a book of uh, interviews with him called Spontaneous Mind. But he was talking about how you know for him like art wasn't really like you know art in a way. It was more like just like you know art art was came when people were just like sort of futzing around, you know, playing around with. Uh, new things and possibilities and um you know yeah in that way it's like it's almost like um inventing or something it's like it's like you're just tinkering and then suddenly you have something that um you know is uh, particularly striking or unusual or or tickles like a new uh, bone in the psyche that nobody's tickled before mm-hmm. uh alex if you're with us if you can speak i'm kind of curious because you were very you were very excited about trying to break uh, the ai as a path to uh, creating some interesting NFTs. I don't know if you want to comment on that. Like, back to speak. No, I guess I guess Alex is not quite with us. Uh, I see Charlotte Dunn is with us. I believe Charlotte is one of the writers for um, the magazine that Raven and I started, which I think will eventually be kind of certainly linked with, if not been folded into the Beyond Project. Uh, I don't know if Charlotte wants to comment on, on her experience with that at all. Hey, Charlotte. Yeah. I just gave her that option if she wants it. Uh, Natalia, what about you? What's your active engagement in this uh, NFT realm right now? Yeah. Look, a uh, huge engagement about four years ago, I co-founded this uh, organization called the New Foundation, and um, we created the centralized social network for specifically creatives, fashion people, you know, those people that create videos and stuff like that. And um, just like focusing on the creatives who are not quite technologists. Um, It was a while ago. I uploaded, as I say, my consciousness on it. So I really uploaded a lot. Like I would spend days there just uploading manually data. Uh, You know, you are there, (laughs) Daniel, one way or another, Um, just screenshotting of some of the amazing uh, mystics uh, of the world. I've been actually forked out of this community because uh, my co-founder thought I'm too mystical for the you know bigger audience that he was aiming so there was a little bit of a or actually a big of a mis um misunderstanding I guess uh, but I did uh, encode a lot of things there I put a lot of light language there and um uh, yeah like uploaded my consciousness I think that tells a lot 
I think we're all uploading our consciousness on social media generally in some degree. Um, so we have to be very careful with that and very intentional. Um, I've uploaded them as a form of digital shamanism, as I would like it to call it. Um, so basically creating a space that is protective for the, uh, the future of Web3, because Web3 is, um, of course, the future of the Internet. And uh, now I'm focusing on network states, DID, decentralized ID, uh, decentralized uh, societies, um, just uh, taking meetings and a variety of different um, groups and initi initiatives that are uh, basically creating a parallel society uh, based on what we're creating here in the uh, spaces of Web3 DAOs, just going a little bit beyond of uh, using NFTs as, you know, for the sake of, you know, making money. Um, in that social network called New Life, there's part of the new foundation. The NFTs are mintable on demand, so we're not overproducing art, which is important. Um, yeah, and just going to events, as you know, uh, Daniel, we've met at Pawa. So going to events that are specifically like technology oriented and uh, scouting for leaders who are awake <laughs> and mystical enough to be able to do the work together in the long run. I believe that um, the founders of technologies of the future will be very, very, very um, reflective of what we're speaking here and very intentional because uh, we have to embrace and brace really ourselves with the quantum computing and how that's going to affect us. And we also have to brace ourselves with um, the AI uh, legislation. And um, yeah, I'm also interested in legislation around the world and unifying legislations of Web3 and, you know, cryptocurrencies and AI um, with don't really speak a lot about AI legislation. I think it's going to be a big thing that's around that. Currently located in Metaslavia, as I like to call it, as a country where I'm coming from, but I'm expanding and um, just trying to also create like a network state that is Metaslavia because um, I love my country, but it's not behaving well right now. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, cool. I mean, uh, get in contact with us. And I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Could, could be a good. Could be a good i'd love to contribute of course i'll i'm already signed up for a newsletter the beyond us newsletter but i would love to you know be uh, so communicating I, 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 I have a vibe that you and raven have a good uh, cool yeah you know, raven i'll reach out to you directly thank you so much for holding this space i just feel yeah. a big resonance i actually was sleeping and then uh, a big room showed up in my dreams a uh, very big room um my co-founder of new foundation wasn't there i'm like where are you where are you He's not there, but there's a lot of food and abundance there in this room. And uh, then I wake up and I remember that this room is on and I enter it. So we are, you know, we're building abundance for ourselves right now with all the technologies that we're actually building for life. This is very important. So it's been an hour of being in the space. I think we might fold for today and then, and then uh, you know, come back next week. Uh, if anybody has a last comment they want to make, uh, as I mentioned, um, I put the website in the title. Uh, www.beyond.us uh, with a zero uh, or you can just send me a DM on Twitter uh, or uh, some other method if you hunt me down I'm daniel.pinchback at gmail and um, yeah it's great to have you all here uh, any last words anybody Jonas, Jordan, Kyle uh, Raven um, can I just share uh, That's the best of you, I got right? kind of inspired by, by Raven's story about the grassy knoll <laughs> and, uh, and and uh, I just want to share a quick story and kind of weave together some of the themes that have been talked about. Uh, I had this experience one, and and um, the, the the reason I'm bringing it up is I think that this could be part of the social dynamic, the the community aspect of the, of the DAO um, as a, like a support group for you know some some uh, psychic phenomena that happens we don't really know how to deal with or and um so so this this particular story um i was at a, a bachelor party at this uh we rented a cabin it was like on a hunting ground that was like 200 acres of woods and uh it was really bizarre it was kind of like a jurassic park where you had all these animals caged in you had to make sure you you touch the remote uh fence so it shut and you wouldn't let the animals out there's like elephants and stuff like that but we weren't hunting or anything we were just we were just partying at this cabin and uh i uh i ate some acid and uh late at night me and me and two of my friends we went for a walk and walked out to this lake and we were looking up at the stars and i saw you know all the 
uh, all these geometries linking the stars together. I'm like, man, I wish I could just stay out here for a couple of weeks and, 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 and write it down and figure out how the nature of reality works. I'm like, I think I could figure this thing out. And um, in, the, in, the, in the time of being out there and laughing and joking around with friends and stuff, um, I remembered it was, it was right after a time that I, I learned about uh, uh, Stephen Greer and his, uh, his method for calling in UFOs. I've, I've since, you know, I think he's a, a bit of a charlatan, but um, I, I was like, oh, let's, let's try this thing out where, where you, can, uh, you can bring in the aliens. And, uh, and so the idea is that you, you, you kind of picture yourself where you are in the Earth. And you, you, you go to out to, to outer space, you find some aliens, and you, you like draw a back map to you. And so I kind of started to do this, and I felt a connection with some aliens. And I'm just like, well, I don't want to be the guy on acid talking to aliens. But uh, so I'm like, I got the idiot shut this down right now. It's typical. But, you know, later on, I regret it not, not uh, exploring that. Like, I didn't go beyond enough. Like, I might have, I could have could have had something that was uh that was cool and interesting but uh i, I was scared to because i there's the taboo of being the guy on acid talking to aliens so um so i, I was just thinking about you know kind of jonas's comments about you know trying to figure out what is the fabric of reality and uh, raven's comments about her experience with the uh, the entity in the grassy knoll and i think um creating this community for people to encourage and share stories and talk about what's worked, what hasn't worked, and uh, create kind of a support group for uh, us weirdos uh, mm -hmm. trying to uh, navigate this weird world that that uh, is. That, that's my comment. Very sweet. <laughs> Very cool, Kyle. Thank you. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's stop for today, and we'll uh, come up with another time to do this next week. And thanks, everybody, who joined us. And uh, great to chat. Look forward to the next time. Thank Bye you all. Everyone. Bye, everyone. Ciao, everybody. Great seeing you all. Good times. I even got, like, excited enough to download this freaking platform again on my phone to speak with Daniel. Daniel knows how big of a fan I am of his work. I definitely am a big fan. Look how many followers I got just because um, this person I, I am sad that um, I woke up later uh, for this meeting, so that's sad. Do you want to see my LinkedIn? Oh, there we go. GFA. 
oh yeah, I was uh, I started to <clears throat> fill in this form, the monitor, and it says it's gonna take half an hour for each part of it to fill in. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> later. Um, I must I must download it. You know, download every PDF you can find uh, if you are uh, have come across it, just in case. Yeah, this is the survey, and it's also in metastatic language somehow. Um, they translated it, like, you guys. Like... <laughs> the fashion and textiles industry employs an estimated... It's so cute and yellow. 300 million people and generates tremendous... Um, yeah, I'm sleeping and I'm actually stressed out uh, a little bit because of uh, the news that I got from the new foundation team that somebody that I don't know calls herself like mama of it. I'm like, yo, you know, you know, real mama, <laughs> trust me, you know, who's real mama is of the new foundation, you fuckers, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's that. So I started like looking at LinkedIn, trying to understand like what's what's the reason why somebody else calls themselves a mama, like did they sleep with the founder or something, you know what I mean? So it all got me to really, really difficult places of accepting the fact that, you know, what I believe in and what I think might not be aligned with um, what others believe in just because um, they, you know, see me one way and I see myself maybe a different way. So this is my LinkedIn, yes. You know, and then I was like, what the fuckers, you know, this is who it is. And then I was like, Bzz. because look, I have to be very honest, right? Like. And then I added this because I realized that all of them have, if, if they did both this and this, they have it separate. And, um, and then we're not going to look at all of the other experiences, right? Yes. Why, why would we? Virtual assistant. Very cute though. Cardano Summit. I don't believe in Cardano. I never, I never had, even though I think I bought it for some reason. <laughs> but you know, everything I buy in, in the Web3 world, even like even I have invested a tiny bit or whatever, it doesn't mean that uh, I believe in it. Um, 
honestly. Because um, I really believe that much of the um, where was that summit location? Um, because I believe that uh, it all will break uh, soon enough, and um, you know those who hold it uh, are actually not gonna. And I could definitely like stake it, but I don't give a fuck about staking. I think staking is um, energetically not good. <laughs> You're not saying we are exactly the Cardano summit was. Any ideas where it was? empty even the panel talks are empty <laughs> kidding but yeah there's so far so many photos um what's the city so cute that they're not saying the city is <laughs> like probably want to tell our favorite photo is this because a uh, new life is mentioned here twenty twenty one yeah I really don't believe in this uh, entity anymore. <laughs> and look, I'll do everything I can, you know, to make sure that, um, you know, these guys know their place at this point. With me uploading my consciousness on there, I can, you know, manipulate it as much as I need um, for my own defense. I, l I really mean it for my own, own, def own defense and defense of my people. to fibers look at it later okay uh, loves I need to do some other things I love you <laughs> 